So today I want to take you along on the full Kathmandu Nepal experience. From arriving in the capital city, walking through the narrow streets, the markets, the different nice places to stay, cafes, and I have to tell you that in many ways this place was quite a bit different than I thought it would be. And then going up the mountains, just slightly outside of Kathmandu, you get to see things that you will see nowhere else. The tallest mountains in the world, Mount Everest, the Himalayas. This is the full Kathmandu experience. I'll make sure to leave timestamps for you down below if you're interested in the particular part. If you're planning to travel to Nepal and especially Kathmandu, this is the video for you. from the roofs of Kathmandu, Nepal. Guys, I have to tell you, a country I've heard about years ago. It seemed like this interesting, mysterious place that I had no idea about. And the truth is, I still don't. I just arrived here a day ago, spent the night, arrived in the evening, waking up, and I'm overlooking the city here right now. And today I wanna take you along on the first impression so we are riding december 2023 as you see i'm in a shirt during the day it's actually fairly warm yesterday was super sunny today is slightly more hazy but still it's warm it's busy and it's different than any place i've ever been to before so today i want to take you along on a yeah full impression of the city you're gonna walk around everywhere this right here is the roof of the hotel and i have to tell you i'm surprised i paid like 34 dollars for a room and i thought like yeah it looks good but actually it's like amazing value so here is kind of like a rooftop terrace the guy started working here in the morning Kathmandu is developing guys i'm so excited to take you along first of all it's much more chill already i can say than i expected in the sense of on the street yesterday in the evening i just walked around to give you a quick idea of the room that i'm staying as i said 34 dollars and we're having this like two window a rooftop room pretty nice i'm all packed up just staying a night here right now but let me take you along on the first full day in Kathmandu. well let's get on the streets as you're seeing behind me the buildings the streets everything about this place is like nothing else i've really seen before so the first impression is extremely narrow streets and especially if you have kind of like the aerial perspective it looks a little bit intimidating you know just walking between these streets cars are still driving scooters are motorbikes like crazy but at the same time there's a lot of nice little places like you have seen the hotel you have seen the courtyard inside cafes and uh seriously you have to be a little bit careful out here and today i just want to take you a little bit along explore it with you get a better idea of it myself honestly i'm very surprised how cars manage to drive here i mean just look at that so basically little markets everywhere lots of people very busy there we have some type of nepali tesla driving by probably chinese but seriously what a place just being out in the street very rarely these days you know guys after visiting i don't know how many definitely over 50 countries it's rarely that i'm like wow this is like nothing I've ever seen before. So. Okay guys, it is the first day in Kathmandu. And for me, it's always, it's always about, <laughs> as cringy as it sounds, the energy. And even though it is super, super busy, as you see, I'm just wandering through scooters here. I have to tell you at the same time, the people here, the energy, it's kind of different than I expected. First of all, the place is fairly touristy. So you see a good amount of foreigners from everywhere, really. Like I'm seeing uh, obviously a good amount of uh, Chinese, but also definitely uh, Westerners. And I have to tell you that outside of just the fact that maybe you get approached, you buy some fruits, you buy some clothing, as you see, the marketplace is real, but it also is not just for tourists. And that's what I love. Still, most is local population. And I think I'm really in the busiest part of the city. I'm heading towards the Asan Bazaar. Okay guys, just a real 
quick, we're here right now in the Himalayan mountains, over 2,000 meters elevation. And no matter where I am, I am on the road with the level 8 suitcases. Look, if you've been watching the channel, you probably saw me talking about them before. For over a year now, I've been on the road with the aluminium carry-on. This is the level 8 Pro with the laptop sleeve. I have to tell you, the design, the build quality, especially the aluminium carry-on, is probably one of the most... Well, the ones are kind of like, you know, really nice looking suitcases, but also they have a lifetime limited warranty on them. So if anything happens, you can reach out to the customer service. So it's really premium luggage at an affordable price. And uh, recently they had the Black Friday sale. Usually they never do more than 10% discount right now for, uh, let's say, the holidays. If you want to give somebody a gift, if you know, if you're traveling, if you know somebody who's traveling, you want to make a gift to yourself or to a special somebody with my code Danny15, you can get 15% off their whole range. So no matter what it is, be it the checked luggage, be it the, the range of carry-ons and uh, worldwide shipping. So no matter where you are, you can get it. I've once ordered one from Asia. If you're in Europe or US or Canada, I believe free shipping even. And uh, yeah, just go to the website, check it out. And with that being out of the way, well, let's roll back into today's adventure. I don't know why I put it here, but you get the idea, we're in the freaking mountains. You're gonna see about that more very soon. Himalayas, Mount Everest. Seriously, how did I get here? Whew. Oh, I was afraid I'm gonna be a bit too cold for this time here in Nepal, in Kathmandu. I was actually coming from uh, Eastern Europe and there it was getting really cold. So I have like one little jacket that I had with me. So that's also, I was like, I have to leave. I hope it will be enough for Nepal. But you can easily hook yourself up here. The stuff actually also looks pretty good. How are you? And uh, I would say the mission for today is going to be to go to some of the main hotspots. Maybe get a nice like, I don't know, maybe try their coffee, maybe try the local drink, some local food. And uh, yeah, if you are coming, here, unprepared, not clothed correctly. Well, you're not gonna be in any trouble, that's for sure. So, let's see. I don't know, I'm just looking around a little bit, trying to see what there is here. Yeah. What is the name of this place? Hassan. Hassan Bazaar, yes. yes. I saw it on the map. Yes. Do you know these, uh, these buildings, these shrines? Is it like uh, religious? Yeah. Yes, sir. Do people pray there or? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. In the Hindu. Hindu temple, yeah? Is yeah. it the temple or is it? Yes, Hindu temple, uh, Hindu and Buddhist, very different here. So it's the uh, main uh, Asami area. Okay. What do you do? Uh, You're I'm selling something or? Uh, no, sir. I'm not uh, selling anything. No? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to buy something, but okay. Um, I'm looking for people mm -hmm. making some tours. You're doing tours? Yeah. Okay. So what kind of want, tours? I'll give you a making very good tours. I really, I really appreciate it. But I'm just shooting a little bit by myself. But thank you. What's your name? I'm Lalama. Lalama? Yeah. Alright. Thank you. Thank you. I'll okay. get going. Next I'll get going. Uh, Next time. If you see me, say hi. Thank have a you. nice day. You too. You too. Yeah, sometimes you get approached, but I have to tell you in the most respectful and sweet way, like you cannot even say no. Uh, yeah, Asan Bazaar, I think we're in the middle of it. You're having these old, just some parts even ancient buildings, like you have to understand some of these things. Hello, hello. How are you? How are you? Uh, some of these buildings are like thousands of years old. We're heading right now to the main square. Interesting, I'm living right inside of the bazaar basically. <laughs> and you have to say, the people here have some swag, seriously. I like your jacket, your jacket is good. Hello, nice. where are you from? Hello. 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 Seriously, fresh as fuck. <laughs> and another one. Okay, guys, 
coming out of let's say the busy market area the city changes quite a lot so bigger streets bigger intersections shops really that's the part of Kathmandu that I haven't seen at all yet and here it feels like really that's what I'm surprised really about Kathmandu it feels like a super busy just kind of like market village so many streets such a big district just at the market but here coming out so this area is called the ah, crap you just know it and then you forget it Durbar Square am I right yes the Durbar Square used to be initially kind of like the palace district and uh, yeah nice shops on this side and we're approaching something very interesting looking so already I can say Kathmandu on the one side very unique but also the city is structured in a way that it really looks different depending on the corner you go to so this over here is obviously quite a different feeling you're having this uh, white building at the square I would say let's check out Bento Cafe looks like they have a rooftop so let's get up there's uh, food from Nepal here no. yeah. and let's do some uh, steamed buffalo momo Steam bubble? Yes. Thank you. Nice. And black tea. Perfect. And then you can choose. You have both. So here we are on the roof of this cafe. I have to tell you, it's honestly even better than I thought it would be. So I wasn't sure. Coffee, tea. We got both. You guys, look at this view. I have to tell you, this is always my go to, no matter where i am yeah you can just go in look for the usual viewpoint go with the crowds or look around at some of the cafes pick out the ones that is the best mix of kind of like fairly peaceful but at the same time offering the views and the coffee looks very promising so yeah here we are looking at one of the main ancient squares in the world Pretty much thousands of years of history it used to be kind of like a palace square depending on which part you want to go to you have to pay it i think a thousand nepali rupee which is like know, seven dollars or something and even though we're at such a hot spot the prices i think i ordered a soup for like two three dollars and the coffee is dollar fifty solid eight eight point five out of ten this might be some of the best coffee i've ever had in asia Ooh. Uh, this your wife? <laughs> no, no, he's not that. That's oh, me. Alright. Oh, Thank you. Cool. Great coffee. Very good. Yeah, Thank you very much. The Momo soup. It looks amazing. I'm loving soups. I've tried Momos before in India, but not the soup. So let's see with buffalo meat oh my god this is delicious wow mm -hmm. cool. okay so let's say after getting the more touristy side out of the way honestly the square really really cool super aesthetic great cafes it's getting busy i would say we're going into there's some type of park in the middle of the city but generally from the roof of the hotel i've been seeing that parts of the city look different and that's what i want to see right now a little bit so already in an hour i'm actually going to be leaving Kathmandu. i will be coming back and where i'm going pretty excited about so make sure to stick around but for now let's get into yeah let's see the real life so big street here big stores got like big adidas stores still like so far Kathmandu seems like one big market so guys just walking by it looks like they have some type of maybe also English speaking books 
they do. They do. So we have the just arrived, and then we have the banned books. And it's an interesting selection. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Had the recommendation for this book quite a couple of times. And one I that I read years ago. To brush it up. Concise Laws of Human Nature, Robert Greene. Relentless by Tim S. Grover. <laughs> Let's go. I don't think I don't think I need any of the band books for today, but excuse me. Thank you very much. And yeah, the goal is gonna to be to try for the first time properly some of the local food, maybe go for some street food, find some nice cafes with some nice views. And um, yeah. Sunset's coming up in a couple of hours, so join me on a little little food expedition through Kathmandu. Let's go. Alrighty guys, let's hit the street. So tomorrow I will be heading out, out of Kathmandu, into the mountains. Well, go to other cities and um, quite excited for that. But for right now I still feel like I haven't properly explored the city. I've been to a busy market in the last video. I've been to the famous Dorbar Square. And I have realized that yeah, Nepal is quite different than I thought it would be. On the one side, super busy, kind of like as you would think. Big capital city, lots of people. But at the same time, they have really a lot of... First of all, everywhere in this neighborhood is pretty much a food market. On the other hand, there's also really nice cafes. They have amazing coffee, which for me, traveling through Asia, just coming out of India on a layover, is always a little bit tricky. But at the same time, just the food choice that I'm seeing is quite intriguing. So let's jump in. Right, so diving into the neighborhood of Tamil. It's kind of like an interesting mix. On the one side is a very touristy neighborhood, as you can tell by all the stalls, little shops on the side of the road. On the other hand, most of the people still you see here are locals. And I think local tourism is also fairly strong in Nepal. And uh, the one thing that I definitely want to eat today is the famous Nepali momo. I had some type of soup. I don't know if it was the real deal. That is kind of like the mission for today. On the other hand, there's a really nice neighborhood around uh, the most famous square where it just seems like one big food street. And uh, yeah, hopefully the day is not going to end in food poisoning, which happened to me before, but generally pretty strong stomach and a uh, bit of an adventurous spirit when it comes to that. Maybe that's why it's strong over the years, to be fair. Oh, yes. Okay, they sold me. So guys, I'll say for the first time we're gonna go a little bit more local. Looks like they have all types of different momos here and more. So let's see where we can sit. That's all the production here. Very nice. Wow. Nice. So two uh, let's do a buff and buffalo, yeah? Uh, buff uh, tukpa and let's do also a buff uh, steak. I don't, I don't know if I've ever tried buffalo properly. Have you tried buffalo? Cool. Yeah, good. Okay. But it's a little bit spicy. A little bit spicy. Okay, you're already a master at sales. Some meat, okay? Yeah, it's like buffalo, it's like a big, kind of like a cow, right? Yeah, but, but here in this country, you don't have cows, only buffalo. Know. I don't know if I'm being no, offensive right now. Yeah. You know, the animal? Mm -hmm. We have to talk to the animal. We have to talk to the animal. Uh -huh. Get the yeah. animal and then we can do something. Yeah. And you did you chop a buffalo before? Yes. Yes. That's why. It's or is it your father animal. doing it? Okay. What's your name? My name is Jigistama. Jigistama? I'm Danny. Okay, Jigistama. Thank you for the explanation. Your son? Yeah. Will be good salesman. He's good. You want a drink? Drink. I will also buy a drink. What do you have? Yeah, I'm Sprint, but. Can I have a? Um, usually, don't do sugar drinks, but. Mm. Can I have a Fanta? Okay, Love this place already. I think I'm okay without a straw. Thank you. Mm. So 
So it is. Some of the Bali Fanta. Seriously, it looks so old school retro. I love it. I swear to God, last time I had a real Fanta, not Fanta Zero, is probably more than a decade ago. So, good stuff. <laughs> is this all like what is it, chicken, buffalo, or no, mix? This is the buffalo. One. Buffalo, yeah? Yeah, you have to eat this thing. I will eat it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> there we go. That's me. Oh, this is. Mm -hmm. Nice. This is your wife or something? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a wife or something. Yeah. That is your wife. Yeah. yeah. Where? Seriously, the education here is going strong. Alrighty, guys. So here, my food has arrived. We're looking at the buffalo momo. What is the name of the soup? This is a uh, uh, bok tupa here. Tupka? Tupa. Tupa. Yes. From the big sting. Yeah, because this soup? Yeah, I have to. Yeah. Yeah. Almost on my lap, but almost doesn't count. Just a little bit, I would say. Oh, you got it. I got it, yes. Huh? Got some good momo? Super nice knock. Steaming it perfectly for me. I don't really like them fried. So, yeah, soup. In here, you know, sick people, they have, they can, uh, they can eat this thing. But only veg. They can only eat this thing. Sick people. So, guys, flavor is not too strong. It's very, let's say, not spicy. Like, it feels like a broth. And overall, kind of just a little bit of champignons in there, a little bit of set, some type of kale. So kind of like hearty, but not too heavy of a soup. And generally all the Nepali flavors that I've uh, tried so far in the hotel. I'll do it. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. We got, what is this animal, do you know? Buffalo. Oh, Buffalo. buffalo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is a yeah. Here we this got some type deer. of deer, yeah. Two deers. What is this? Some type of cat. What? Big no, cat. this is a yeah. Alright. These are for you. This all? All for you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Whoo guys! What can I say? The kid is a legend. Very sharp kid. Impressed. He's just sitting there and dissecting my personality. Uh, dumplings, amazing. Honestly, slightly dry. Otherwise, I would have given them like nine. Uh, still very, very good. The soup, really cool and different. That's what I like. When everything kind of tastes the same, it's a bit boring. So let's sit a little bit this street. Let's head to the main square. Maybe find like a nice lookout spot. Have some coffee, maybe some Nepali dessert to wrap up the day. They're selling some really cool clothing here, so I suppose this is uh, I would guess official Nepal clothing. It's actually really good. I have to be a bit careful with the camera. Motorbikes are passing by, and generally, like the nice, the interesting thing about Kathmandu is that even though it's similar what they're selling, still every kind of store has like different jewelry, different clothing. Let's get some micronutrients going. Hello. Hello. You have a pomegranate juice? Yeah. Yeah. Hold your one, yeah? Mm -hmm. Reminds me a little bit of the Caucasus, Georgia, on the street. They like to do it a lot. Supposed to be very good for you compared to just like other more sugary fruit drinks. Oh, yeah, and talking about the prices, uh, the soup. As well as the momos were under a dollar. We left obviously a little bit more. Here was I. This is why was so cute. Yeah. Let's see. You're gonna fresh press or yeah, pomegranate? Nice, fresh. nice. It's live. Sorry? It's live or recorded? I recorded, but live soon. Oh, very good. Yes. Vlogger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a nice coconut? Ah, yeah. Some electrolytes. See them. Okay, I want to take a look at how he's doing the pomegranate. Are you doing it? 
Let me know when you're doing it, okay? You doing it? Uh huh. And where do you put them in? Yes. Nice, amazing. So let's see. Legit. All right. So that was a good call on the pomegranate juice. I've seen it. He's done it all with fresh fruit. Maybe a little bit of water. And yeah, walking to one towards the main square. Been there a couple days ago. I would say for the rest of the day we do have to get a little bit of an elevated view. Okay, and so we are back at the Durbar Square. Here's like a market. They're selling a lot of different, looks like also handmade things. I'll, I'll take a look. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at the dog. It looks like it's someone's dog. So what surprised me is that they're hand, hand carving them actually. So different masks, little jewelry. I think actually, you know, I'm always going a bit light on like souvenirs because visiting family maybe every other month to drop that stuff off. Always have to get a magnet from my mom, but yeah, Nepal, that's what I mean. Truly one of those countries where it's not just like little magnets and little trinkets, but they're doing their own things. And it uh, looks like most of these places have some type of rooftop. So let's get up. My mission is to understand what is in Nepali dessert, and I hope somebody can help me with that. This is a Kumari house. Thank you, thank you. Found ourselves. Some kind of rooftop was not easy actually, but very well worth it. I just checked out one, it was very busy here. Wow! So, look at that. This is the famous Durbar Square. I think a couple of days ago I was sitting somewhere on the other side. Uh, the entrance actually to get in there is like ten dollars or something, but here from one of the many cafes, you get a pretty nice view of it. Dessert? Sorry, no dessert? Nothing? This one no? No. No? No dessert. Ah. Well then let's drink something. So as mentioned, they do know how to do coffee in Nepal. I'm okay. Whew. It's just between me and you, it's not as good as I had before, but still, a little sunset coffee, 5 p.m. It's getting dark early right now. But let's see, I'm gonna wander around a little bit. Not sure if I'm gonna find anything else leaving the city tomorrow morning excited I'm gonna keep the videos a little bit more raw right now just really want to take you along on the experience I'll let you take part they want king yogurt that's right king yogurt yeah it's, it's a yogurt sorry only yogurt this is sweet thai yeah it's like a nepali dessert nepali yeah dessert. okay i'll take one please mm -hmm. okay hmm. yeah is that okay? okay all right thank you I'm not giving up! I'm not giving up! I don't know, I just felt like trying something sweet here. We're gonna have some type of 
Nepali yogurt. Why not? And also, I just like to scout a little bit the different locations around here. And this might be or must be the best view of Dorbar Square that I have personally seen yet. So this place is called the Dorbar View Restaurant. Makes a lot of sense. Nice. With milk, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, well, guys, at last, at last, the sun is setting, but we have got some type of Nepalese yogurt. So there's a couple of nuts, raisins, looks like cashews. Oh, wow. It's like sour and sweet, but it's really sour as well. Didn't expect that. What animal? What milk is that? You know? You know what milk is that? Sorry? It's uh, made out of milk, right? Yeah. What animal? Uh, mixed you know? like cow, uh, buffalo. Is, but you don't. Um, is there cow milk in Nepal? Uh, or is it buffalo of, or goat mixed or most mixed? Of the, uh, like, mixed? Uh, most of the Nepali mm. people. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, no buffalo. So this is buffalo, yeah? Yeah, buffalo. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, very good. Buffalo it is. I was hoping she would say buffalo. Buffalo day. Oh, I hope you enjoyed today's little Nepali Kathmandu adventure. Where's my coffee? Um, let's say like that. A very very interesting city a very unique city this is probably one of my favorite places all around down there is a bit touristy that's kind of like my only thing if you're in the city and it feels very safe very comfortable at the same time you get approached quite a lot of different temples little bit this that services being offered to you but passing through absolutely enjoyable experience first time kind of like a local food and you know it was just again an experience for itself Right next to where I'm staying is the Kantipur Temple House, environmentally culturally sensitive boutique hotel and I was looking at it all the time when I'll be back in Kathmandu. Actually considering to maybe stay here. Absolutely beautiful aside from the roof of my hotel. And this is how I would say what also makes Kathmandu very very special. They're turning some very very old houses into yeah, amazing hotel concept. Speaking of amazing hotel concept, I think we should head out. Yes, nice. Yes. Ah. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. You only? Yeah, just me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Cool. Guys, let's head to the mountains. Wow, what a vehicle! Opa. What was your name? Samartha, sir. Sam Samartha, sir? Samartha, Samartha. Samartha? Yes, sir. I'm Danny, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, it's hard with such a big car here. <laughs> Darbari Square. Darbari Square, like in Kathmandu, yeah? Yes. Sir. But of the... This city. Is the name of the city? This city? Yeah. Lalitpur, sir. Lalitpur? Lalitpur. So driving through Lalitpur, around a one hour drive away from Kathmandu, 20 minutes in. A little bit even with the sun setting, so pretty nice. So we're driving by the second World Heritage Site Square. Oh. Good evening. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. I'm Danny. Welcome to the palaces. Looks very nice. Thank you. Guys, welcome in some ways to the top of the world. <laughs> so we are in Nepal, 
we are overlooking the mountain stretch of the Himalayas. We are at a place that is called The Terraces. And I have to tell you, arrived here last night, right now is the sunset time. And this place is truly one of a kind. What we're overlooking here is the mountain range, a mountain range that is including some of the tallest mountains in the world. As you probably know, Mount Everest is in Nepal, but also I think eight of the 10 tallest mountains in the world. And we're seeing actually one of them from here. So we are around a one hour drive from Kathmandu and we are at a super special place. So as of right now, 2000 meters elevation, pretty much a quarter of Mount Everest almost. The terraces a resort, it's kind of like built in the design of, uh, let's say, inspired by a temple. So you have this kind of like entrance area, then you have the little, uh, or actually fairly large, which I'll show you later, um, rooms you can stay at. And the goal, the mission for the next three days is obviously to fully take in a little bit the mountain views already just this morning, having breakfast here, just taking in a little bit the views already my memories for a lifetime but also maybe explore a little bit the neighborhood um there's supposed to be some local areas definitely want to obviously try a little bit some nepal food but this place is truly something it was actually built by a man that pretty much his whole life was connected to mount everest and um i'll tell you the full story yeah truly truly little little heaven of nepal So right now, in the fairly early morning, guys, we are from here, from the terraces, overlooking the city of Kathmandu, which when you're up here, you really realize it's quite a big place. So the earlier you get up, the better the view on the mountains is. And um, I have to tell you, right now it's December, so it's a little bit more chilly, but still compared to like where I came from earlier, this year kind of like europe eastern europe uh beautiful beautiful weather very lucky with it and let me give you a little tour today so on the menu i mean first of all breakfast that's where we're headed right now then we're gonna head into the little village in the neighborhood here but first i would say let me give you an idea of this property i think i'm gonna stay here for like at least i think three full days pretty much and uh, as you see behind me they're having a pool. Perhaps if I feel brave, we're gonna jump in. Obviously not the warmest season, but nothing <laughs> speaks against the cold plunge. And Thank you. So guys, look at that. Here's my nice little table. This is the view. Later today, I think we might be actually cooking Nepali food, but for right now, wanted to go in for some scrambled egg, absolutely beautiful. Like actually they're growing a lot of herbs and vegetables in their forest right next to it. I'll show you in a bit, but for now, whew, some fresh watermelon juice. Seriously, I'm a big mountain fan. Sometimes when I'm in Europe, I'm like, I think this might be one of the biggest mountains I've ever seen. Well, right now we're in a country where eight out of the 10 tallest mountains are here somewhere back there depending on weather condition we're seeing Anapura um, over 8,000 meters one out of uh, 14 mountains in the world that are over 8,000 meters and, uh, yeah. so this is gonna be our means of transportation for today I'm not sure, have I ever driven an ATV? I think at some point I did, but I cannot remember. This one looks pretty, pretty nice. So this is kind of like, let's say the grand entrance. And the thing that kind of makes this place very special is that very often hotels on top of mountains, kind of like a more busy area. If I'm flying around here, there's literally nothing on this hill other than this hotel and you really feel it. You don't hear anything, super peaceful, super secluded. Let's ride out. Let's ride out and let's find out what is in this neighborhood here. On, on and off. Yep. And this accelerator. So, ex uh, this accelerator. So, not like bike. So, let's see. So, uh, okay. And, uh, this is the gear. And this is the gear. Pretty fun! 
fun. I don't know if you can hear me. Nice, it's fun. It's very fun. So guys, we're out somewhere, nowhere pretty much right now. Mountains even all around us are pretty high. What is fairly interesting is there's some type of plantations. I don't know what they're growing, but you see layers of bushes. Then you see little houses pretty much all throughout this mountainous region. Yeah, look at that. This is where we're driving through. What was your name? I'm Razendra. Hey, Razendra? Yes. This is our guide for today, this is our ride, and uh, yeah, 15 minutes in, another 15 minutes to go, we're going to some type of like little village, I have no idea, we will find out. And driving that thing is very easy, I think I drove one a couple of years ago, I mean actually it's probably not that easy, but compared to all the places I've been driving around, you know, no other traffic. So we're stopping by a little fish farm here in the neighborhood. That is a very interesting thing. We're in a real Nepali village, pretty much one and a half, two hours out of Kathmandu. You've seen the roads. Like this is not a place you just randomly bump into. So yeah, really cool. Uh, obviously Nepal is landlocked, so there's no sea. This is how they grow fish locally. Mm -hmm. is there, oh yeah, there we go. Mm. Alrighty guys, back on the compound, I have to tell you, thrilling riding experience, but also got me a bit dizzy. These roads are intense, but it's super fun to drive. Now I'd say getting a bit hungry. We could go to the restaurant like any other day, or I would say let's cook ourselves. People ask me, when you're traveling, how do you do it? You know, I just find the kitchen and then I cook by myself. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Well, not quite. Basically, they're having some type of Nepali traditional kitchen out here. And uh, maybe I'm gonna learn some things today. Excited. So it's supposed to be kind of like a cooking class. Let's see. Hello, hello. Hi, sir. How are you? Good. Oh, wow. Hello, how are you doing? Good, good to see you. Good, good, good. Wow, look beautiful here. Nice. So this is all we dry out uh -huh. for the pickles and all. Dried pickles, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. we need to make the dried pickles. So we need to dry it for probably, depends upon the sun, it's one week or something so that we can put it inside. Mm -hmm. So we have prepared all that pickles wow. inside, yeah. That's, I would say, nice kitchen, first of all, but then I'm turning around and I'm seeing what is... This is Kathmandu city or... Yes. Wow, what a view. Yeah, this, is, this one is uh, Bhaktapur. Bhaktapur. Uh-huh, yeah. And this one is Lalitpur. Okay. No, do we also see Kathmandu from here or...? Yeah, Kathmandu is okay. So basically, we're seeing half of Nepal from up here. Yeah, this side is Kathmandu. Uh-huh, nice, nice. So, we're gonna be cooking something? Yes, yes, we're uh, cooking something. What uh, type of dish or? Yeah, yeah, uh, something of Nepali dishes, like mm -hmm. main courses of all. Okay. And uh, it's like uh, one rice, dal, one chicken curry, probably one veg curry, and the homemade, like uh, our cultivated one, this uh, leaves inside. Okay. Yeah, this is all. Uh, well, I'm ready to work <laughs> if I have to. So. Fire smells really nice. So in a sense, this is kind of like traditional setup? Traditional or? setup. Mm -hmm. This is how uh, we uh, used to prepare all the everything. Yeah. Well, looks actually quite functional. So there's like three, three the, with three the holes. That's kind of yes. like how they do it in the village yes. as well? Yes, yes. Okay. True uh, typical Nepali concept of this. Nice. Charcoal it inside this. So do you also grow these here? Or? Yes, uh -huh. we grow this yeah. And saw. we just put it inside. For the light flow, after the, uh, the flame has to come inside and has to be burned equally, like okay. on the skin of the tomato only. Then we'll make out of this. And do I have, do I munch it? Or? This is the best part of this spices, it's called Timur. Timur. 
Timur, okay. This is Sichuan pepper. Sichuan pepper. Sichuan mm -hmm. pepper, but this From is very, yes, mm -hmm. for the Nepal only. You can you can just chew it if you want. Just chew well, it. Let's chew it. Yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, strong. <laughs> this is the main ingredients of any chutney. It's, uh, spicy, right? With chili. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Am this I doing it any right? Yes, you are absolutely right. I feel like all the. Yeah, yeah, you can come with it. Yeah. Wash my hands. Yes. Yes. You can taste it, yeah. This is ready. Along with the rice or anything, you can just have it to this. Extremely salty and spicy. Salty and spicy, okay. But after that, <laughs> we can mix it together. This will be okay. Yeah, that's it. What? Done? Yeah. Oh. Some chicken in the making. Very hard, huh? <laughs> Woo. So guys, okay. nice. little I would say 20-30 minutes later, a couple of dishes later. Super cool, traditional Nepali kitchen, especially with that view. But yeah, in the process also got quite hungry. So let's see what we got. How do you say thank you in Nepali? Dandibad. Thank you. Dandibad? Dandibad, yes. Swagatam, sir. Da, da, da. Where is the... So, everything is cooking, everything is looking very, very locally. And then all of a sudden, the chef put this together and look at that. This looks absolutely beautiful. So, all of that we have just cooked up inside of here. This, this, is, this is chicken. This is chicken. This is lentil mm -hmm. and ca cauliflower and potato. Nice. This is the pickle which we have prepared. Uh huh. Well, I'm looking forward to try the tofu. Up. Mm. Very good. So this is what I was um learning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. Okay, nice breakfast. Let me give you an idea of where we're staying. So here's like a little fish pond, as always, with nice little Buddha statues. So let me show you where we're living here. So I think in total they have, I checked it yesterday, 46 different rooms, pretty much on three different levels. This is the suite two. And I have to tell you what a peaceful place. So first of all, in, at night you don't hear anything. This is kind of the living area. Nice little sofa, TV, Netflix. Yesterday I watched kind of like a Mount Everest climbing documentary here. Nice table, got a coffee machine, everything. And the sleeping area. Look at this, guys. Whoop, whoop, where is it? There we go. The mountains here I have set myself up a little bit as a working area. Another TV. The bathroom, especially the way the light comes in in the morning is truly something but that is not it i believe every single room in this place has a terrace some are bigger some are smaller but this is really something so coming out also definitely spending a lot of time here and they even have a jacuzzi i think i've got a shot of that earlier and uh yeah this is pretty much the home but you know what is even more interesting than just a nice place in the hills, the backstory of that place. Let me tell you, let's go out, let's go, I think, into 
their own private forest here. Let me tell you about just that. <laughs> So from what I understood, the hotel is a family business. And when I first arrived, they told me a little bit the backstory of it. So basically, uh, the idea for that has been decades. I think 40 years ago, they got this property. They wanted to do this. There had been some political instability. And the owner of this place is part of a group uh, of people in Nepal that is called the Sherpa, which are pretty much the people that for the longest time have been helping to climb Mount Everest, do all the mountaineering. So uh he, he's also from that region and uh, the hotel here itself is not let's say just a luxury experience in the mountains it's also much more kind of like a na nature experience because yes you have like this very nice facilities this very nice rooms but also they have this forest area which i'm walking through right now they're growing a lot of their own herbs vegetables spices and uh this over here i think is the yoga area they're also doing yoga classes in the morning so they got a couple of these little huts and i would say you kind of get the idea super peaceful around here and pretty much no matter where you are you're getting a view and as of right now i haven't left the property yet for the first two days that i've been here especially just Walking around here, you're seeing so far, you're seeing all of Kathmandu pretty much all the time. I've never been at a place where you can see so far into the distance in terms of like city and mountainscape. Um, let's say, let's explore a little bit of the area here. A really cool thing that you can do while staying at the terraces i think this is like what was it like a 30 minute drive maybe down from the hill obviously if you're in the capital of Kathmandu, you can uh, most tours take you here this is the doorbar square of uh, pretty much like a neighboring city or district lalitpur and pretty much they have the doorbar square part of the ancient kingdom used to be the palace at least in Kathmandu, and this is the neighboring door bar where so when you're at the resort if you're staying a bit longer another amazing location to check out very very busy as well After filling the belly at the traditional Nepali kitchen, we're back in, let's say, Himalayan luxury. So on the weekend here, it was actually very busy when I first arrived. Now, super calm and peaceful. Honestly, the food was delicious, super fresh off the oven from the fire. The chef is a legend, but just to relax again a little bit, because we had to work a bit, we had to work a bit, you know? <laughs> Uh, sit down here I saw actually they're having shisha maybe it would be nice but this view seriously out of this world well perhaps one of the best sunset places in the world I have no idea what I have ordered here some type of mocktail don't want to go for the alcoholic beverages today but a little bit of nicotine we might do tonight and uh, yeah seriously just looking at one of these mountains i don't know the exact height but it's definitely still one of the tallest mountains in the world and um yeah i guess we'll see you tomorrow morning or at dinner delicious though
Okay, guys, good morning. From the mountains, I think uh, today, I know today is the last day. Here it's almost kind of sad. So especially after yesterday's like little ATV trip, little, um, how to say it, really got an experience of this area. I think this is one of the best parts is that you're really staying in a local village, people going about their daily life. You get to kind of like experience a world that I think probably very few foreigners get to experience so close to Kathmandu also. But at the same time, you know, if you just want to relax, if you want to have a little secluded experience for yourself, the terraces. This is the breakfast. I wasn't sure if I want to have English or Nepali today. So they were like, ah, come on, we gotta do a little bit of both. So we got some Nepali type of bread with uh, curry and we got like English breakfast type but here is very nice and lean I like the scrambled egg a little bit of veggies fruits nice little coffee so overall the food here the chef that we were cooking with yesterday I've tried his Thai food his English food his Nepali food I've tried a lot of different stuff here and everything was very good So right now we're gonna check out their spa here. I should have an appointment for 1 p.m. Hello, how are you? I should have an appointment for 1 p.m. Uh, uh, your room number is 32? Yes. Oh, please have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. And so what I just had there for lunch was actually the trout, the local trout, the fish that they grow in these like um, installations that we saw in the local village. Um, when I was there, they could have cooked it up there, but then I was, um, the hotel told me that that's where they get the fish from. So because I knew that chef is doing his magic, unexpectedly, the fish that they grow there has been some of the best fish I've had. They grill it here with super nice creamy sauce. Seriously, compliments. To the chef. And well, it has been a couple of very good days in the mountains of Kathmandu, and I would say it's so much more. This is kind of like as I see it as a platform to just see and take in so much of Nepal, of the Kathmandu area. On the one side, the mountains, the nature. Like when you sleep, you don't hear a single sound. It's so peaceful. There's nothing around here. You have seen it on the aerial shots. On the other hand, if you just look down, you see little villages, houses, schools, like real Nepali people living their life. And that's also what I kind of like discovered when I did the little ATV tour. So overall, yeah, very good time at the terraces. If you are new here by any chance, on a channel I document my life around the idea of building a life of freedom around the world and basically day-to-day -day life going to different countries sometimes a little bit more for the adventure factor in the last couple of years also very much got into the topic of covering special places hotels resort different let's say experiences retreats and uh, I have to tell you the terraces really exceeded my expectations in the sense that yes it's a nice let's say very very much so luxury property but it's really set up in a way that kind of like feels kind of like truly Nepali in the sense that it is kind of like set up in the way of a temple it's um, it's minimalist at parts let's say if we talk about the yoga if we talk about the Nepali kitchen but when it comes to like your room it's kind of like you get to experience the nature while staying at the place that is really like on the global standard and uh, even though it's not like a big part of like some uh, major chain, it's a privately owned family business. And uh, yeah, from that sense, seriously, such a clear day today. I can even see like the houses. They look like a little nail right now. The big houses down there in the Kathmandu Valley, pretty much. Almost a month in this yeah, what used to be to me a mysterious country, a place I didn't knew much about. If you're here in Nepal, what do you think? You're thinking of mountains, you're thinking of perhaps, you know, Mount Everest. Maybe you've heard of Kathmandu. That was all I knew before coming here. And I have to tell you, 
It was quite different than I expected overall. But before we hit up Kathmandu again, for the last time, today is my last full day. I want to feel it again. I want to see it. Let's wrap up a little bit where I have been, what I've experienced. So I arrived in Kathmandu, first impression of the city, narrow roads. I'm like, wow, this is a bit busy, a bit tricky, a bit intimidating. But the moment you're out on the streets, you realize it's actually very calm, very chill in a way. Yes, it's busy, it's loud with all the cars, but the people and the vibe is very laid back. So even though, let's say, in some areas there is a lot of things going on, compared to other, let's say, also neighboring nations, traveling perhaps India, maybe even Sri Lanka, Colombo, even though it looks really kind of chaotic, the vibe itself, like the people are just very nice. Everybody speaks English here. It's actually quite crazy. Maybe not everybody, but especially in Kathmandu, the level of English is extremely good. So you feel safe at all times and things like that. But I have to tell you, just going out of Kathmandu, you get a very, very different vibe. You go into the mountains, you go a little bit up. I went to this place called the Terraces. And what you see from there is, you know, some of the highest mountains in the world, the Himalayas mountain range, the full videos all about that are up. But just to wrap it up a little bit, I was impressed and surprised by how how much of the country you can see just by slightly getting out of the capital of Kathmandu because I didn't expect to like Kathmandu actually as much as I did. We'll talk about that later when I head back into the city. But yeah, then took a bus to Pokhara. That was intense. And uh, Pokhara itself, much more laid back. Nice little lake town. Stayed there by the lake. Stayed there also at some nice like let's say more secluded places and uh, wanted to go hiking. Got sick on the bus ride really was a bit knocked out still feel it a little bit even in my chest i don't know what it is but that is a little bit yeah never happened to me on any trip actually where i had to take it a bit more easier a bit more lighter but overall have a reason to be back this has been a little bit over 20 days a little bit the mountains a little bit the different bigger cities and uh, there's still so much more to see so one thing that needs to be said about nepal many of the let's say highlights are not that easily accessible so you can do it via like a tour provider or if you want to do it yourself you, you know get get just get just ah. Whew, i'm out of breath i'm still a little bit sick honestly but i want to feel the city one more time but basically after experiencing it quite well in terms of the bigger cities really staying there for a while really also seeing a little bit the local life while at the same time got a world to see style really experiencing some very special places to stay some very unique accommodations and that's another thing i have to say about Kathmandu. they have so many nice cafes restaurants and also hotel concepts which in other asian countries i didn't experience in the same way like this so the level of hospitality and different like interesting concepts is 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 really surprising here i have to say like almost like you know if you're in pokhara some places look a little bit like a bali vibe if you're in Kathmandu some places it really shows that they are very competitive when it comes to tourism and I think Nepal is only going to be getting more and more popular and on that note I would say also got a world to see style let me show you where I'm staying so this place is called the nomad let me go in here you know when I heard nomad I'm like yeah I can relate to that quite a lot the marketing got me and it's a very nice I would say mid-sized boutique hotel. Around it are some bigger hotels. We're in a very good location. Well, I don't know. Uh, we're we'll gonna walk there right now. 15 minutes from Tamil, one of the nice, busier areas. It's very minimalist, very aesthetic. Let me show you around here for a second. So, this has been the home for the past couple of days. Have to tell you again, as I mentioned, nice minimalist but also very aesthetic so this is poker right you can watch the full episode it looks pretty much exactly like that i mean this is you know animated picture but yeah nice little bed i absolutely love the vibe of the courtyard the hotel we'll show you there in a second but yeah also at the same time kind of like the whole nomad idea it's really functional got my little working setup here so i think the goal is going to be to head into Kathmandu city and i want to give you a little bit more of a review while also being inside of it and kind of like feeling it but yeah let's head down so I would say we're gonna be shortly heading out into the city let me just give you a quick idea of let's say the lobby and everything else so this is where they also have the breakfast in the morning maybe I'll show you tomorrow morning but yeah as I mentioned before in many ways fairly functional well at the same time so okay I would say let me go out people are having meetings 
my favorite part about the whole place is definitely this courtyard so this is where i had lunch yesterday and i have to tell you very surprisingly you know for the past 20 days all i was eating was nepali food their momo their soup different meats buffalo and then you get to a place like that and they have an Italian restaurant. And you know, I'm always a bit wary about Italian food in Asia. Sometimes it's a hit or miss. Most of the time it's a miss. And here, at some of the best pizza, really, they told me an Italian guy taught them how to properly. It's not just properly, like seriously. For me, I'm a bit tricky about pizza. Some of the best I've had. So this is a little bit of the courtyard. And I have to say, with what they have, they made it absolutely super cozy, super nice. So a bit of a seating area. You've got the nice palm trees. And this is pretty much somewhere in my room. This is what I'm looking down here on. And I think for dinner, I'm again gonna hit up the Italian restaurant. This is pretty much how it looks. Hi guys. So, in the evenings it actually gets quite busy. And this is another exit. Let's see. Oh. And so yeah, this is exactly what I mean. Generally, Kathmandu, so many nice different concepts. So it's called Piano Piano, Italian food and wine at the Nomad Hotel. And uh, this is just the thing about Kathmandu. So many nice different cafes, be it local, be it internationally inspired, like here at the Nomad. This is what quite surprised me about Kathmandu, that there's just so much to choose from, like really compared to Let's say if you go to neighboring nations, India, even Sri Lanka, like I really struggle to find a nice cafe here in Kathmandu. Alrighty, so hitting the streets. We're heading into Kathmandu, my last day. I want to see it. I want to feel it once again. It's already, I think like 10 days ago since I've been in the city center, since I left. You can watch pretty much the full video series is up now on the channel. But I almost feel like I missed the city and I didn't expect that from Kathmandu, the capital. So let's head into the busy market area. So as I said, Nomad Hotel around 15 minutes, pretty much walk, I would guess. I just checked on the map. And uh, this area is a little bit quieter than where we're heading to right now. A little bit wider roads overall. So Tamil is very different. You'll see it in a second. So here, another way of how Kathmandu looks. So busy streets of Kathmandu, we're heading into Tamil. I wanted to check out the market, maybe even film a full video there, but also I've heard about an amazing rooftop bar, it's possibly one of the best in Kathmandu. So this will be the next stop for right now. But it's not an easy task to cross roads here, I'll tell you. It's not an easy task. Busy Nepal. Guys, this is my last day right now in the city. There is one place I wanted to come back to before I leave. It is not this intersection. It is a place where hopefully I can spend the remaining couple of rupees that I have. Or let's say invest them properly. So we are headed right now to the Asan Bazaar. I have to tell you, one of the busiest bazaars I've ever been to, but also Quite interesting place. So generally the whole Tamil neighborhood, I mean, right now is a bit of a, yeah, one big market in itself. But the Azan Bazaar, everything from dried meats, fish, gold, clothing, everything. Everything you can find there. And this is where we're headed right now. I think I have another three, four thousand Nepali rupee, which is my budget. Let's say 20 bucks that otherwise, I don't know, I would spend for dinner. Let's see what we can spend it on here. Okay guys, before we head into the market, another, I would say, really cool thing. Just seeing a little, little bit of a backyard. How are you doing, boys? How are you doing? How are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. What are you playing? What are you playing? Coco. Coco? What is Coco? What is Coco? What is Coco? Huh? We are playing. We are playing. What is Coco? What are you playing? Yes, yes, yes. I hope you're not doing Coco. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Hello. this is a little Nepalese no, neighborhood. No, we are Nepalese. Yeah. We are Nepalese. How old are you guys? I am Indian. You're Indian yes. and Nepalese. Yes. No, he's a Nepalese. He's Nepalese. 
Yeah. All right, boys. Have a good one. Your English yes. is very good. Your English is very good. Keep it up. I'll get going. Ooh, I don't know what Coco is, but let's get back into the market. So basically, that's what I mean. It's like you have very nice, uh, very little side roads, but then you have these nice little courtyards where you see somebody is putting in some effort into their houses while at the same time you're having these like very old kind of like um i don't know it almost looks like they might have been built a hundred years ago or something just a very very different style to different neighborhoods and this is if you stay in tamil this is your first impression so most of the hotels are around here and uh very narrow little side roads let's get into the market and so this is it, the Asan Bazaar, starting from some Nikes and New Balance over to snacks and anything else you might find in the side roads, we shall see. So basically a huge thing that they're selling here is the dried meat. I don't know what animal it is, let's see. Maske. Sorry, what is it? Is it buffalo or? Yeah, dried meat. What animal? Buffalo? Okay, okay. So look at that. Pretty big pieces, got all kinds of different nuts and stuff like that. For me, I have the big responsibility that I have to live up to. My mom told me I have to buy a magnet. So I'll take you along on that, obviously, the most touristy thing you could be doing. But also New Year's coming up and in the place where I'm from. Let's say originally, at this point, when people ask me where you're from. I'm from everywhere and nowhere. But New Year's is a big thing and I'll be meeting a special someone for New Year's. And it's kind of like, you know, post-Soviet Union countries. New Year's is kind of the Christmas. So let's see if we can find also some little presents for a special someone. But that's what I'm talking about here. You have all kinds of goods you can buy. A water boiler hello hello generally overall is pretty calm but people still look people are still curious all right walking right next to me oh here spice paradise how are you boys so basically you can buy almost anything here but what is this this is the star masala star anish star anish it's like a uh, spice yeah mm -hmm. For like dessert, is it sweet or what, oh, pe what wild, do people wild, do with wild, it? Wild, wild sweet. Wild sweet. Yeah. Okay. So basically you can buy beans here, almost everything corn. Let's see. I think this street over there, I've walked by here once, I think in the very first video of you, I've been watching exactly. This temple here was kind of like one of my first impressions of the city. And I know that back there they're selling very different stuff. So let's head over there, see what they have. So look at that. I remembered the good old days. I don't know why, but the memory I'm having is hostels and you need to put a lock on. The very first tri trips I did, they were like, do you have a lock? I remember heading out to markets and all they had was one little lock. But here, hello. So you're the lock master. <laughs> wow. This is a proper lock right here. How much for one like that? 750. 550. 750, okay. 650. Well, that's a good price, good price. So if you want to get robbed in your hostel, you go for one of these. Those were the ones that I was locking up my stuff with and was praying to God, to all the gods that I'm going to be fine. But this is what you need. Shan and Shan. So some carved, I don't know, little, little things. But I'm looking for something like jewelry. Most optimally Nepali jewelry will discover that we'll find out. So here some golden chromed mokas, I think. What is that? What are these? What are these? What is this? Is it like decoration or yes. yes, okay. For a second I thought I can cook coffee in that. But no, it's not for coffee, right? Water, we, we can put water in mm -hmm. water okay and then just drink or for flowers or, okay okay very nice is it made in nepal or 
Somehow, somehow, somehow in Nepal, somehow in India. Some in India, some in Nepal. Okay, I see, I see. All right, guys, thank you. Let's see. So basically, you have some Zara made in Thailand knockoffs, which is quite interesting, actually. Hello. This is uh, the most interesting thing in the last couple of years. I started to see that they do like H&M sweaters with big H&M brandings for stuff like that. So. For the season, you also have everything you might need. So this must be the most interesting shop I've walked by so far. One day. Hopefully fairly soon. I want to build a few different, let's say, bases around the world. And one of them, most likely somewhere in Asia, maybe Southeast Asia. And every time I walk by places that sell these kind of things, I'm like, yep, that's what I want to hang in my home. One fine day and one fine day I will come back to places like that to, yeah, explore. So basically they have like these Nepal machetes. Is this old or is this recently produced? Okay. This guy on it just says Nepal. What, what, what is this? Is this like a temple? It's a famous temple or? Yeah. Which one? Oh, the one here? Ah, okay, both the four. And this real knife? How much for a knife like that? This one. Let's say this one. This one, 3,500. 3,500, all right, so like for $25, they're probably gonna stop me in the airport big time with this one, but very nice. And they're all produced in Nepal? Okay. I will be back, I will be back. Maybe not for the knife, but these masks here especially. Very cool. Especially the fact that they make them here. So... Looks like we walked into the handmade Beats Street. Or at least somewhere it says Himalayan Beats. So basically they're putting together all kinds of different things. I don't know, necklaces, decorations. It looks like... Hello, hello. It looks like many of them are actually handmade right here. Some people are sitting and making them, so the full street, all the same. I'm just wondering, is this like decoration or is this necklace? This one necklace, yeah, I see that. Uh -huh. And these? Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, let's say like that very colorful necklace I'm looking for something a bit more subtle perhaps <coughs> do people wear like one or many? one piece yeah, one piece is normal or many piece normal? Two okay. piece, two piece, good. Alrighty, guys. So after the old town, this is I would say in some ways a little bit Kathmandu new town. Need to figure out how to cross the street, but other than that. There's one place I still wanted to visit, which is a rooftop bar. And I thought sunset is probably the best time to do that. So in front of me is a um, yeah, pretty large mall overall. Actually, I would say it's probably the most modern intersection I've seen so far. So let's see the penthouse bar rooftop. Let's check it out. I would guess I would suppose on top. There we go. Ooh, actually, I have not wandered in here yet. Pretty large, pretty nice mall. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. So one more up. Talk to some lovely lady. She's in the treat. There she goes. <laughs> so basically a pretty large mall overall. There is a job, Hemeli and a job of coffee. Pretty nice. Hello. Wow, guys, 
That's unexpected. We're gonna get copyrighted because JT is pumping, but this is amazing. An S. Oh, hello. <laughs> I was about to sing, but okay. Nice one, nice, nice, nice. I'm good, I'm good. Cheers. Ooh. The dessert! I forgot about the dessert, it's coming, yeah? Okay, okay, okay. The dessert is coming. The dessert has arrived. Oh. Thank you, bye bye. Okay, thank you, bye bye. Thank you. Okay hey guys, good sunny morning. Seriously, I feel like I got so lucky overall with the weather. So it's always a little bit last minute for the breakfast. As you know me, usually kind of like a little bit of my inter intermittent fasting train, but if they have it, it looks very, very nice and pleasing here, pretty much in the lobby corner. Here you have basically just like little options, little snacks, drinks, veggies, and the main breakfast. Kind of like they have it in the kitchen, they cook it, so we ordered something. Let's see. Especially just sitting back there. Guys, it's time to leave, but my driver is just driving somewhere else. What do you guys ordered the taxi online? We got some nice traditional Nepali taxi. Up, uh, hello. Mm -hmm. Going to airport, yeah. Yeah. International. Yes. Price like in the app, yes. Yeah. Price like in the app. Yeah. Like an app, yeah? 500. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's go. See in neighbor. When I was in Pokhara, price in the app was 600, and then the guy wanted two Gs. So you learn, you live and you learn. We're gonna drop a little bit of top. Especially if people are honest. And so guys, here we are, driving out of Kathmandu, very mixed feelings. On the one side, I've been quite a long time here and uh, yeah, ready for new adventures. On the other side, I liked it so much more than I thought and I think we'll take you all the way to the airport to wrap it up. To show you also how it looks around there. Bit on top. Up. Oh, Thank you. There we are. International Airport. Busy. Around six years ago, I realized that there is so much more beyond the borders of what you're familiar of. That a world to see was born and it is all about living and traveling through different countries all under the premise of finding more more opportunity more adventure and more freedom <laughs> <laughs> 